you guys fall in line. Um, how do you train your handstand walking? What do you do? Hands huh? in holds. Hands in holds? All right, okay, so you broke my 100% session. You actually gave me, you gave me an actual exercise. Most of the time the answer I get is, I just do it. I just go until I fall. And that's how I train my handstand walk. Like, well, what exactly does that mean? Well, it's like, you know, I, I kick up and I walk until I fall. <laughs> that was awesome, I'm ready to go. Okay, so that's my handstand walk. Uh, if that's how you're training your handstand walk, uh, we're gonna start over, okay? That's not a handstand walk. That's an eventual fall, all right? <laughs> You can only sustain that for a certain certain distance before you just collapse. So we're going to approach handstand walking completely differently. We're not going to just throw ourselves at the floor and hope for the best anymore. Fair? And ideally, what we're going to be thinking about here is trying to apply a lot of the mechanics that you already do on your feet to what we want to be doing on our hands. All right? Same type of action. We'll start to break this down piece by piece. So a couple things are going to happen here. One, I'm going to show you two variations of a handstand walk. I'm gonna walk from point A to point B in a particular way, and then I'll walk from point B to point C in a particular way, and I want you to tell me the difference in what happens from the first to the second variation, okay? So let's keep an eye out. So as we get into our handstand walk here, we're in that position, and we're gonna to start to walk. Now, second variation. What changed? What looked different from variation one to variation two? What is press up to the ground? We're taller, right? Positionally, what was happening is the change in my shoulder angle. Right? The first one was more of a closed shoulder angle, more of an arch in my lower back to get the weight trapped in the direction I'm trying to go. Ideally, what do we need to do to do a good handstand walk? We need to get the weight travel in the direction we're trying to walk, right? So think about it from a walking or a running or a sprinting perspective. How do we get faster? We get more lean in that particular direction. Our feet can catch up in that particular direction, we can go faster, right? So out of the blocks, you would see a lean boom before that person actually starts to run, right? You never see this, bang! <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when you do it on your feet, but it's what everybody goes to when they're on their hands. Or throw their hands out in different ways. That does not work, that does not work. So the first variation was a, a component of that, where I had a really close shoulder angle, and what I need to do to get my weight traveling forward is bend more and more in my lower back, or bend my knees or wear the heaviest shoes possible so I can get weight. I'll put my lifters on as I do my handstand walking because I know it's going to take me in that direction. Not ideal, all right? You're masking the issue. So what did I do on the second variation? What we talked about when we were finishing up our handstand drills from earlier, our handstand rock, opening up that shoulder more and more. If we can't open up the shoulder more and more, you're going to have to bend more in your lower back to be able to get weight traveling where you need to go. And you can get away with this when you're doing something flat, especially if you're strong. But as soon as you start to see a slight deviation, if you are exposed to something that requires a little bit of an angle, walking up some stairs, something like that, a slight obstacle, you're screwed. You're screwed. There's no way because you have weight traveling in the opposing direction because you have a closed shoulder angle, chest is going one way, and you're trying to go the other way, the only way to do it is to bend your knees more or bend your back even more. Not ideal for long term. All right, so this is why opening up the shoulder angle allows us a more uniform arc position to travel forward. Does that make sense? All right, so ideally, more uniform, more open you can get that on the back of the shoulders, the more efficient your handstand walk is going to be. Make sense there? All right, now, I do want to make an additional comment here about what you watch versus some things that are not ideal. And we're going to come back to this in a second when it comes to handstand walking uh, in terms of what's happening mechanically with your gait. But I don't want you to always watch a games athlete or someone that you idolize within the sport and think that they're doing it technically correct. All right, a lot of times we'll watch someone who wins an event and think that they're doing it efficiently. That's not always true. Maybe it is sometimes, but not necessarily always. And I think we get caught up with the idea of they won this event, or they're the best at it within this particular world, so they must be doing it technically correctly. Ask more questions, all right? Most of the time, crossfighters at the highest level mask their inefficiencies because of their extreme strength. Strength can mask tons of inefficiencies, right? We see that at the highest level a lot. So when you're watching someone, you try to emulate 
you know, the, the Frasers of the world, Fraser does most things technically correct, so he's kind of an anomaly. But most of the time, we have to ask more questions as to whether or not this person is using strength to mask an inefficiency or if they're actually doing it technically sound. Fair? All right, we'll talk about this a little bit more a little bit later. Let's talk about what's going to be.